Here's some rules that I hope you will find valuable in your daily clinical practice when assessing such patients. The first rule is, is the patient really a responder? So when a patient comes into the lab, before I even perform echocardiography, I always ask, did you improve with respect to your symptoms after CRT was implanted? First information. The second information I try to obtain is from the basic echo that I do when the patient is on the bed. And I compare that with the echo before CRT therapy. That will give me a very good feel for whether or not the patient is a so-called responder or non-responder. Be aware, however, that some patients will not show significant differences with echo, but still show improvements with respect to their symptoms and maybe even BNP. So the echo is sometimes not such a sensitive parameter to really detect small changes or small improvements. The second rule, look for indirect signs that you can compare. So the left ventricle size is one of these parameters that are very important. Look for diastolic function, in other words, whether or not a patient reverted from a restrictive filling pattern maybe to a pseudonormal or even to an impaired relaxation as an indication that his filling pressures are dropping. In addition, look at mitral regurgitation. I previously showed you that some patients have a decrease in mitral regurgitation. And as a matter of fact, this is sometimes an even more sensitive parameter than looking at the absolute diameters or volumes of the left ventricle. Rule number three, look for residual dyssynchrony. And you can do that visually, but also using parameters. Rule number four, compare on and off effects. Here is an example of how that is done. On the left-hand side, you see a patient where the pacemaker, the CRT system is off, and on the right, when it is turned on. By this simple comparison, I can see the effects of CRT therapy, and I can immediately determine whether or not the patient must have benefited from the procedure or not. Sometimes these differences are subtle, but sometimes they're dramatic. And the more dramatic they are, the more the patient probably benefited from the procedure. Here is the same patient again. Now we're using mitral regurgitation as a parameter to check whether or not he benefited or not. On the left-hand side, you see that MR is a little bit more than it is when you turn the CRT system on. Another indication that he will definitely benefited from the CRT therapy. Rule number five. For optimization, focus primarily on the non-responders. You will not need to optimize a patient who is a super responder. Maybe you could achieve some additional benefit in some patients, but there is always the risk that you can harm the patient, that you can create more dyssynchrony if you change the settings. 